The next generation of FLL Robot is finally here, and pretty soon, it's going to be taking the first LEGO League community by storm. How do you follow up a robot like Sirius? a robot that is arguably one of the most famous FLL robots in the world. What is this new generation of FLL robot called? And what does it do better? Stick around to find out more. What's up everyone? My name is Kyle. You may also know me as BuilderDude35, where I run a YouTube channel that's all about LEGO Mindstorms. You may also also know me as the inventor of the original Sirius EB3 FLL robot. Am I tooting my own horn a little bit? Yeah, maybe just a bit. But that's because I'm so excited to share with you the new generation of FLL robot. This is the Mindstorms robot that is going to follow in Sirius's footprints and carry on the legacy of my FLL Robotics platform to the new Mindstorms Robot Inventor and Spike Prime. Okay, but hold your horses for a quick second because I want to give you just a little bit of context so you can understand why I'm so excited about this new robot. So it all goes back to February 2015, which is when I founded this YouTube channel. Believe it or not, I was 14 years old at the time. I'm not 14 anymore if you couldn't tell. But this is when I first built the Sirius FLL Sample Robot. And I made that using the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 platform in order to demonstrate concepts on this channel. Over the years, Sirius has gone through a few iterations and improvements. It's even had an NXT spin-off. But more importantly, this design ended up being way more popular than I ever imagined when I first built it. This robot has traveled all over the world. I've gotten letters from teams all over the place telling me about how they've adopted the design. And believe it or not, as of the recording of this video, the robot has been downloaded over 12,000 times on my website, which to me is, is totally crazy and humbling. Thank you so much, guys. I don't even know 12,000 people. I have like three friends. No, I'm kidding. Sirius is such an important robot to me and this channel because without that design, this channel wouldn't be anywhere near as popular as it is now. I've got here because of how successful and how widely adopted that design was. And thank you for everyone who supported it over the years. Understandably, now I have very big shoes to fill with this new design, which is why I'm so excited to share it with you today. I know this new design has been making cameos on the channel ever since the tutorials resumed at the beginning of this year, but now I'm ready to unveil the final finished design for the next generation of BuilderDude 35 FLL robots. Here it is. Just as anticipated as the robot itself is the robot's new name. And I wanted to throw this out to you guys in the community to help me name this robot so we can celebrate it together. So first, I ask you to submit your ideas for names for this new robot, and then we held the first ever election in the Builder Dude Nation, where you guys voted for your favorite name for this next generation robot. And you guys voted for, drum roll please, Proxima, named after the star nearest to our own sun. Proxima is the name of this new generation of FLL robot, and it follows the tradition that dates back to the original series of naming my competition sample robots after stars. I'll actually pull up the results of the poll right here so you guys can check it out. I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who submitted a name idea and for everyone who voted in this poll. I personally was actually hoping Cygnus was going to win. I thought that was a super baller name for a robot and it would always remind me of Down With The Sickness so I could always say Down With The Cygnus and make a meme out of it. Let's talk about some of the engineering considerations that I kept in mind while I was designing this new generation of FLL robot. As I mentioned before, there were a lot of really innovative features that Sirius had that led to its adoption and widespread popularity. So I had to make sure that this new robot was at least as good 
as the original series. So first and foremost is the modular dog gear system, which is where Sirius got its original name, Sirius the Dog Star. And I'm happy to say that not only is the dog gear system retained, it is also improved. So this dog gear system, which allowed you to easily clip on motorized modular attachments is really streamlined in this new version. It's easier to take attachments on and off. The attachments fit more tightly on the power axle and the parts are a lot easier to find. Another great characteristic of Sirius was its compact size. That robot was so small that there were hardly any places on an FLL mat where you couldn't navigate the robot. And I'm happy to say that Proxima is even smaller than the original Sirius robot. And that is because of the new minimized hardware. The intelligent hub for Robot Inventor slash Spike Prime is much smaller than the outgoing EV3 brick and the motors are also comparatively much smaller. Another contributor to Sirius's popularity was its simplicity. There was something elegant in just how simple and straightforward the design was and you could put it together with only about 200 Lego bricks. This robot, Proxima, is just as simple as Sirius. There's an elegance in the design, nothing is too complicated, and it's still very rugged. It is very much an Occam's razor approach to building a robot, just like the original Sirius was. Proxima is just as ergonomically friendly as the outgoing Sirius was. That means under the pressure of an FLL competition, this robot is still going to be easy and pleasant to use and operate. The main contributors to its ergonomics, of course, is the fact that the intelligent hub is easily accessible and completely unobstructed on the top of the robot and mounted rearwards facing. So you can grab it from behind and pick it up and still use the controls. That's a tip that I pulled all the way from my original eight tips for building an FLL robot video up here which is now one of my most popular videos. But what's even better about Proxima is that the USB port, which you use for charging the robot and for plugging it into your computer or your tablet, is easy to access all the time. Which, if you ever use Sirius, you know just how much of a pain it was to access the USB in the charging port. So that's fixed now and it's even better. Another ergonomic pain point of using Sirius was the fact that the color sensors weren't modular at all. They were fixed into the design. And I'm happy to say that in Proxima, the color sensors are modular. All you have to do is just pull them off of the side of the robot and when you're ready to clip them back on again, all you have to do is just line them up and clip it on just like that. And let's not forget one of the hallmarks of Sirius's design, dual color sensors up front so you can do my patented line squaring algorithm, which helps improve the consistency when you're navigating your FLL robot. And that carries right over to Proxima. You can see there's space up front for two color sensors on either side, right in front of each of the front wheels, which will enable you to do line squaring. But just like any engineer worth his or her salt, I wouldn't have been content Intent, just making Proxima only as good as Sirius. I wanted to push the bar even further and I made a few improvements. The first improvement is the obtainability of parts. If you've ever worked with Sirius, you might know that some of the parts you needed to build that robot were hard to find. So those tall motorcycle wheels, the ball casters, some of the parts for the dog gear system were kind of hard to track down and were expensive if you could find it. I'm proud to say that Proxima in the new design is buildable with only the parts from one LEGO 51515 Robot Inventor set. So all you need is the off-the-shelf kit and you have everything you need to build this robot. No more hunting down extra stuff on BrickLink. That brings me right to my next point. This is the first platform I've designed that is compatible with two LEGO Robotics products. Of course, I'm holding the Robot Inventor version of this robot in my hand, but you can also build a very similar version of this robot using LEGO Spike Prime. Because if you didn't know, a lot of the hardware is shared between Robot Inventor and Spike Prime. That is the motors, the intelligent hub, the sensors are all the same. So you can build a very similar design of this robot using Spike Prime if you prefer that platform. And as a matter of fact, I was actually considering calling this robot Gemini and thinking about the Robot Inventor and the Spike Prime version 
of this platform as the Gemini Twins. Last but not least, one of the most common difficulties with using Sirius as an FLL robotics platform was actually the other edge of a double-edged sword of one of its advantages. That innovative wheel design I was talking about before of using tall wheels with inverted motors had an ugly side in that it made your odometry super sloppy when you were driving the robot around. And this was a term that I coined called slop distance, which I did a whole video about in the past. You can check it out. It's a million years old, but still worth watching. This robot now has smaller wheels while still being just as compact as the old design and the new robot inventor motors are more accurate than the outgoing EV3 motors. If you're interested in seeing the robot motor test, I suggest you check out this video here where I uncovered everything about the new robot inventor motors. But what all of this means is that you're going to have less slop distance and a more accurate experience with using odometry to navigate your FLL robot with the Proxima platform. At this point in the video, you are probably super Super pumped about starting to learn with this new platform of robot and you might be looking to download it well before we get there I just want to say if you're planning on using this robot for learning or if you've used any of my other designs in the past please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on this video these designs will always be available to you for free but subscribing and liking my videos is just a simple way that you can say thank you to me um, and it really helps me a lot and I super duper appreciate it so thanks guys Anyway, if you are excited about trying out this robotics platform, by the time you're watching this video, it should be available for download on my website, builderdude35.com under the downloads page. And yes, the downloads should work now. Thank you to everyone who's been writing to me for months telling me that this is broken. When you get to the downloads page, you'll notice that it is not an LDD file, but rather an LDCAD file. And that's for two reasons. First, LEGO doesn't support LEGO Digital Designer anymore. So we have to move on to LDCAD, but also LDCAD is better. If you don't have any experience using LDCAD, but you wanna check out this robot, check out my comprehensive tutorial on how to download, install, use LDCAD. It'll literally teach you everything. You can check out the link up here. You'll also notice when you open this file that it's not 100% complete. When I designed this robot at the beginning of the year, not all of the necessary components were in LDCAD yet. They might be at this point and I might update it. But remember, I'm not a professional LEGO designer, so don't expect perfection from me in these CAD models I built. By the way, LEGO, if you are watching this and you wanna make me a professional LEGO designer, call me because I'm looking for a job soon. By the way, if you have experience with using LDCAD to make real building instructions, I'm talking about like PDF step-by-step -step, like you would get with a Lego set, uh, please reach out to me. I would super duper appreciate if any of you in the community would like to contribute to the Builder Dude Nation by making actual real building instructions for this robot. Oh, hello, what's that? Oh yeah, it's my lawyer. My lawyer has just reminded me to remind you that this design is for inspiration use only. So you're welcome to use this design as inspiration, but I don't wanna see you just copy it and use it in competition because you don't learn anything that way and that's actually against FLL rules. And don't think you'll get away with it too because your FLL judges probably know about me and they know about this design. So make sure you always credit your sources. If you wanna learn more about intellectual property rights, I guess for lack of a better phrase, phrase in FLL, watch this old video I made about copying designs versus using them for inspiration. And that'll give you a better idea of what is within the spirit of FLL competition and what is not. I want to know what is your favorite part of this new robotics platform? Please let me know in the comments section below because I value your feedback. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Later everyone.